Hey all. Uh, today's goal is going to be to kind of spend some time understanding partial derivatives. So to that end, our goals are going to be three. We're going to define a partial derivative. We're going to learn to calculate some partial derivatives. And we're also going to learn a little bit about Clairaut's theorem. Um, really, I'm going to state Clairaut's theorem and then we'll go from there. Um, mostly the focus of this is going to be getting some animations. So to that end, I want to have just a really brief recall here. So can you like think in your head, what do I mean by a derivative period, right? So like, what do we remember from Calc 1? I'm hoping we remember something like maybe d dx of f of x, which like you usually write as f prime of x. And then we define that to be, so we're defining these symbols, right? So we're defining f prime or ddx of f of x as the limit x tending to a, or maybe we'll do, sorry, let me do this one. We'll do h tending to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And then like there's some thing about some tangent lines and like I'm kind of hoping we remember that. So I'm going to bring that in quick. So I made a little sketch, a little Desmos activity here. Uh, so here's a, a little Desmos activity. Um, I wrote a function. In this case, my functions x squared minus 3x plus 2. That's the red line here. I made a point on that function by putting a pair a comma f of a in. Desmos lets you make those things draggable. So I, here I'm just kind of dragging the value of a around and we're seeing a tangent line change. Uh, I've got the equation of a tangent line written here, right? That's a line with a slope of f prime at a and it passes through the point a comma f of a, which is why it's always stuck to this purple dot. Uh, and you can see that this is in fact actually a tangent line. Shouldn't be a surprise that it's a tangent line because we made it to be a tangent line, right? You might uh, you might have this kind of picture in your head where we did something like here's f and we picked a value over here. We'll call that a, or in this case, I guess I'm calling it x. And then we're saying, oh, okay, so what if we go to the right a little bit? So we'll go over here, we'll go over here h so that makes this value at x plus h there's a similar one on this side that's a value at x oops that's a value at x minus h but we're kind of saying okay so here's f at x here's f at x plus h what's the kind of slope here so this height difference is the top of this fraction f of x plus h minus f of x and the run on the bottom here is h right so we've got this little triangle if we pull that little triangle out we'll see that it looks something like this it's h wide on the bottom and then uh, i didn't really the press space self space here it's f of x plus h minus f of x tall okay so that's like old school stuff um you might remember this as change in y change in x and then there's this thing you do where you say, oh, okay, so df dx is like kind of the change in the y over the change in x. Uh, you might even say this is like dy dx. Um, that'd be pretty fair. Um, we're going to kind of use that concept. So I'm hoping that's all familiar. If it's not, um, we're going to need to do a little bit of Calc 1 refreshing. No big deal if it's a little rusty, but should feel like semi reasonable. So that's the like calc one approach. So the calc three approach is going to be slightly different, um, but surprisingly not that different. So here's the difference that I've got in calc three. I'm having trouble figuring out a way to do something like this. Uh, well, I want to do d d. Um, I don't know because there's two variables and so it's not really clear what a tangent line would look like so I'm thinking 
I'm kind of motivated. I'm like, okay, so if I look at that, I'd be looking at a point here on a surface and thinking like, what's a tangent line to that? And I'm like, well, there are like lots of tangent lines to that. Like, what do you even mean? Like tangent line? Feels like I could fit a whole plane in there or something. So that's just kind of not gonna do it for us. So we're gonna have to do something a little bit different. So there's something that's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, I'm gonna tease just a little bit with our tangent line animation, right? So I'm going to I'm going to lose the concept of a tangent line. So I'm going to drop my tangent line and I'm going to replace it with this thing. This thing is an attempt to make what looks like a tangent vector. You see that? So all I did here was I said we're going through the point a comma f of a and then I'm scaling we're going one in the x direction and we're going whatever that slope is in the y direction, right? So that's for a run of one, you'll get a slope of F prime at A. Um, you can see the kind of bottom side of this triangle is always one long. The, the vertical side changes depending on where I put it. So that's kind of the first stage. We're gonna kind of vectorize things. That shouldn't be a big surprise. So when I move to this surface, I'm gonna have to say, okay, so look, I'm gonna think about a vector, but I'm gonna start by saying, let's think about slicing this thing into a problem I know about, right? This thing's too hard, but it's basically made out of two problems I know something about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, what if I hold Y constant? So here's a one dimensional function. This blue thing is a function of, in this case, it's a function of T really, right? This is a, par a curve parametized in T's. But really, this is me saying, okay, what if I take my function f of x and y, uh, in this case, that's x squared minus y squared plus two. And what if I say, okay, I'm going to set y equal to b, some constant. Then it may as well be x squared plus two minus b squared, whatever the hell b squared is, right? So that's this line here. Um, if I change b around, I see that this, uh, this curve kind of moves. So if I get a slightly different perspective here, you can see it kind of dropping down one side and coming back over here. So that's just me playing with values for Y, right? So the thing is that changing the values of Y might or might not affect how the derivative works. We just treat this like it's a function of one variable. So to write that down, what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, I want to take an X derivative, right? So I'm going to kind of ignore the Y's and I'm going to say, uh, okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to say, um, I'm going to treat the Y as though it's constant. So I'm going to think about this as a function just of X alone, right? And then I'm going to differentiate it. Yeah, so when I do that, I guess I'm, I guess I'm really like holding Y constant. So here's the symbol I'm going to use. I'm going to use this little guy because it's not quite a derivative. This thing's a partial. Doesn't, it looks a little bit like a delta. It's not actually a delta. It's a stylized delta. Um, so it's like a funny almost a delta thing but it's not a delta if you want to get one in latex or something you'd write uh you write partial so i'm gonna see if i can get this to convert here oops oh that's not how you do things joe oh cool i can just write here let's go like partial cool so that's the symbol i'm talking about it's actually just a partial so the way I calculate those is I just hold Y constant, differentiate with respect to X. You do have to keep the Y's when appropriate, but you can treat them just like they're a number. So in the case of my example function, right? So my example function was F of X and Y is X squared minus Y squared plus two. F 
x. So this is going to be the x derivative. So this is the partial with respect to x. We could write this as fx, x and y. You'll note that prime doesn't mean anything here. The prime doesn't mean anything here because I don't know which variable it's with respect to. So I got to do something like this. So this guy's going to give me 2x because the y's are constant and the 2 is constant. If I had a different example where I was saying, okay, so let me let me say my function of x and y is uh, x y squared plus y squared x squared. Uh, I don't know why I wrote this in different order. So let's say our functions x y squared plus um, x squared e to the y. If I'm calculating the x partial for this thing, we're going to treat all of the y's as constants. So when I differentiate x times a constant, I get just the constant. When I differentiate x squared times a constant, I get a 2x times the constant. And this constant isn't really constant, right? When I'm saying e to the y is constant, I'm saying I'm treating e to the y as though it's constant. So let's go, uh, let's go look at our little picture again. So that's me taking this blue line, right? That's me treating y as a constant. And then I'm gonna throw in here a little vector. My vector is gonna be one in the x direction, zero in the y direction, and then fx, of a and b, so that's fx at the blue or purple point here, in the z direction, right? So this is like dz dx gives me this vector here. So that is in fact a tangent vector to that blue curve, but that's only half the story. So here's the other half the story. We'll make a new folder. This should have been called y partial, but apparently I forgot to label it. And I'm going to take and turn on a red curve. That's me holding. Uh, that's me holding x constant, varying y. And then here's my tangent vector to that that I got by calculating the y partial. You'll see up here I calculated the x partial and the y partial for my function. And now we can move our point a b around here, and we can see that those are. If we vary the a, see that the blue's always tangent to the blue curve and the red's tangent to the red curve. Move this guy around. This is a pretty simple function because the fx and f, fx and fy are kind of both independent here. You see how this thing really only depends on the one uh, or how the independence of variables is not very mixed up. Uh, let me let me throw some kind of interdependency in here. Uh, let's throw a sine of x in there. That'll make things all kind of screwy looking. Okay, so now I need to, you'll notice that my values don't work anymore. See how those curves aren't tangent? That's because I didn't recalculate fx and fy. So fx in this case ought to be 2xy minus y squared, and then the derivative of sine is cosine, and our plus tubes. Now 3D doesn't like my x, y, so it's 2x times y minus y squared cosine x. See that here? So now my blue one is working, and if I slide this around a little bit, you can see the blue one seems to work through there. Slide this around. It feels like my blue is still working. Still working. Okay, you'll see the red one's definitely not working. That's because our, again, our red, uh, our y partial's wrong. So if we want our y partial to be right, uh, let's see. When I differentiate this first term with respect to y, I'm going to get just an x squared out of that. And then out of the second guy, I'm going to get a 2y. And then what happens to the sign? Good, cool. So sign of X is constant with respect to Y, right? So I can just say I'm differentiating Y squared times, oops, I'm differentiating Y squared times a constant. So I'm gonna get two Y times the same constant. 
2 goes away here, right? It's uh, kind of eaten up by the derivative operator. And now we can see that we've got this thing that we can play around with. We can see that our tangent or our uh, tangent vectors are indeed tangent to those curves at all times. So I encourage you to play around with this a little bit. Um, it's not super hard, actually. For whatever reason, students have a super easy time with this. It's mostly just remembering like chain rules and stuff. You guys got this. Um, make sure to remember those chain rules. Make sure you remember the product rules of thing, the quotient rules of thing. Um, you guys got this. Ain't so bad. Uh, let's talk Claro's theorem real quick. Claro's is this kind of cool result. We're going to see this a lot, so I want you to have this name in your head. Uh, we're going to talk about this a ton. It's going to come up in this class. It's going to come up in DEs. We're going to need that thing. So Claro's is a cool theorem. It says that uh, if fx and fy are, uh, let me let me say one more thing before I do that. So let me say uh, if f of x and y is defined on a disk around a, B, and F, X, and F, Y are continuous. Oops, that's not how you spell continuous, Joe. Uh, that's probably still not how you spell continuous, but whatever. On that disk, then uh, F, X, Y, equal to f y x. This is a pretty cool result. Uh, what this means is that we can take derivatives in either order. And I'm realizing that I just I, I just screwed something up. Uh, so I need f x y and f y x are continuous on that disk. So the second order derivatives. Uh, these guys are called mixed partials. So the way we get these is we say, okay, so f, x, y, I'm going to think to myself, that's f, x's, y deriv derivative. So really what I'm thinking here is I'm thinking, I'm taking the partial with respect to y of the partial with respect to x of f of x and y. Right, so this is kind of stacked derivatives. This is a little bit like a second order derivative except there are too many second order derivatives. So when we're talking about higher order derivatives here. They're like, what? There's, okay, I get that there's two, right? There's an fx and an fy. But then when I like do this again, I've got, let me draw a little tree. I'm like, okay, so there's an original function f, right? If you do the x derivative, you end up with x, fx. If you do the y derivative, you end up with fy. Now, if we do the x derivative to fx, we should get to fxx. If we do the y derivative, we should get to fy, y. Those make sense to me. If I do the fxy, or if I do the f y's x derivative, what Clairo says is there aren't really four distinct things here. These two in the middle are the same. See that? So Clairo says you can get away with one less derivative than you think you need to. So this is Clairo's. Uh, Clairo's holds in slightly nicer cases than this, so you don't actually need something quite this strong for Clairo's to work. Um, really what this is going to be is basically any function that's nice enough you want to do engineering with it is going to satisfy Clairo's. Um, there are a couple pathological cases, like you can sit down with some, some math and some time and you can construct a function that Clairo's doesn't work on, but it ain't that easy. Um, really, if something's thrown at you out of kind of 
Newtonian mechanics and some like engineering -y problems, Clairos is going to work out there. So this is a pretty important result. Uh, it gets used a lot. We use it a couple of different times through the semester. So I want you to have the name in your pocket. Okay, so going back through, Clairos says second order partials don't care about order as long as the function's kind of nice. Partial derivatives are what you get when you hold one of the variables in a multivariate function constant and differentiate with respect to the other one. Uh, that would be, I guess, if we were saying this in uh, the most general case, we'd hold all but one of the variables constant and differentiate with respect to the one we didn't hold constant. Right? So there might be a whole bunch of these. Um, in terms of calculating, it's super easy. You just treat the other ones like they're a number. Uh, the thing I want you to kind of have in your head ultimately for this is this picture, right? So we've sliced our function respect to a couple of different variables, right? So in this case, I've I've held x constant to make this red one. I've held y constant to make the blue one. And then I can use the partial derivatives to calculate the slopes of those tangent lines. There's going to be some really cool stuff we can do with this. Um, I encourage you to play around with this thing a little bit. So check yourself some partials, make up some random functions. You guys can play with this thing. I'm going to leave it just like this so you can fiddle with it. Um, enjoy, have fun. Uh, see if you can learn something here. There's, there's definitely a little bit of fiddling to do with this. Um, you might even double check that you understand how I made these parametric curves. All right, guys, that's it for right now. Thanks.